This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. You keep talking to God about your problem instead of talking to your problem about your God and what he has already done. Think about what I just said. You keep talking to God about your problem because you don't see yourself with power. You see yourself powerless. I want you to look at your life, your family, your friendships, your job, your hobbies, every single piece that makes up your life, God cares about it. And I'm on a mission to show you how to take back the victory in all those pieces, how every single piece of your life is covered under this grace. So join me July 6th through the 10th for Grace Life 2020. Register now at CreflodollarMinistries.org. And remember, no peace left behind. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 10. We have, uh, we've been talking about the contrast, and uh, the last few sessions we've been talking about performing the law versus performing spiritual authority. And we have spent time uh, hopefully instructing you that, you know, you don't have to perform to try to do what, what Jesus has already done, amen? And you've, you've hopefully got it, got it real good that performing to try to be righteous is futile. Performing to try to be redeemed, is, it's, it's, it's just a waste of time. Uh, we don't have to perform to do what Jesus has already done. When Jesus has already done it, what we do is believe it, amen? Now, we're doing that, and we're going to compare and contrast performance under the law versus performing spiritual authority. Now, now we get to the place of seeing why you got to do what you do. And this is going to be pretty amazing. I want to start off by throwing a couple of things at you to think about. You know, when a room in your home goes dark, you don't call Georgia Power, do you? And you don't ask Georgia Power to come to your dark room and turn on your lights, do you? Well, how do you get your lights on? You, you flip the switch, you turn them on yourself. The electric company, once again, I'll say this, supplies the power, but it's up to you to turn on or flip the light switch on and put the power to use. God supplies the power. We put the power to use. God supplies the power, Georgia Power or whatever electric company you have, supplies the power to your house, but you have to put it to use by turning the switch on. Does everybody understand that statement? Now, I believe that the number one reason for unanswered prayer is that people are asking God to do something that he has already given us the power and the authority to do for ourselves. Now, think about that. If you're spending time in prayer asking God to do something when he's already given us the power and the authority to do it for ourselves, now, righteousness is not one of those things. You can't do that by yourself. Redemption is not one of those things. You can't do that by yourself. But he has graced you with the power and the authority to use his power 
to accomplish some things here on, on the earth. And by comparing and contrast, you begin to see very clearly where people have gotten things mixed up. Asking God to do things he told us to do isn't going to bring you answers to your prayer. There are two prayers that God will not answer. He will not answer a prayer where you're asking him to do something he's already done. And he's not, number two, going to answer a prayer where uh, you're asking him to do something that he told you to do. <laughs> Amen? Now, this is so, so, so very important. Um, the average Christian approaches God as if they have no power or no authority at all. And ladies and gentlemen, that's got to change. It's got to change very quickly because, you know, another part of people here in grace is they think now that I'm under grace, that means I do nothing, okay? Or, or they say, well, I'm under grace, um, you know, I just believe. You see how this mixed up? That was all true as a Christian living under the new covenant, amen, where righteousness and redemption and wisdom and sanctification and holiness is concerned. Yeah, you believe God and you don't do nothing because Jesus already did all of that. But when it comes to your spiritual authority, everybody say spiritual authority. Spiritual authority. Authority is the right to command. The authority that God has given you through his grace is a right uh, to execute spiritual law on, on and in the earth. The right to execute spiritual law, not the law of Moses, not natural law, but spiritual law. And there are spiritual laws that he has given us has graced us with these spiritual laws, and your, your authority, you're authorized to execute spiritual law just like a policeman is authorized to execute carrying out the law and enforcing the, the, the laws of, 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 this, of this land, of the city. They are, they are authorized to do so. Glory to God. You and I have been given the authorization to enforce spiritual law. So you can see how we had to rightly divide the law of Moses with the spiritual law, with the law of, of Jesus. All of these things have got to be rightly divided. You throw them all in one bucket, I could make a comment. If you don't rightly divide it, you, you, you're instantly confused because it sounds like it's contradicting. It's not contradicting. We are now talking about the necessity of you doing something to activate spiritual laws of you doing something to enforce spiritual laws. A spiritual law is submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Well, if you don't enforce that and resist the devil, he won't flee. You have the authority over the devil, uh, and he says resist him, and he'll flee. So if he's messing with you, you don't sit there and say, oh, hallelujah, I'm under grace. Take all the wrong truths and apply the wrong way. I'm just resting in the Lord. No, no, <laughs> honey, you, you, it's spiritual authority, spiritual authority. Now, you, 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 faith appropriates the same way. So when I execute my spiritual authority, praise God, then then I can rest in what I've executed, but I got to do something. Does everybody follow what I'm saying? I got to do something. Now, look at Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. All right, now watch this. And when he had called unto, unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Now, we, we <laughs> rock and roll in this thing a little bit. Now, most people, what do you mean unclean spirits? Most people don't believe in that. Uh, some Christians have never seen somebody demon-possessed. Uh, don't even think that an unclean spirit exists. Boy, it is the, one of the most fascinating things if you ever have a chance to witness somebody who's skilled in the Word and know their spiritual authority to cast a devil out of somebody and to see that devil come out and then that person get up saying, well, you know, what in the world? Just, well, I don't even know what was going on. They didn't even recognize it. I used to just be a fanatic about it. I went a little bit too far with it. I just, every time I was looking for a demon, you, you got a demon? <laughs> 
<laughs> I walked in this room one night. It was perfect scene. It was a Sunday night, and this lady, she was sick, but it was demonically orchestrated. And you know the, one of those, you know, the beds that used to be made out of like an iron or metal? She was sitting on that bed when I walked in there, and she had one leg down, just like a bird sitting on, on that bed. And she was walking back and forth, and they were lightning outside and coming in the room, and she was doing all that. And she turned around, and she says, I know you. I said, I know you know me. I ain't scared of you. Now, I got to admit, chills when she said, I know you. <laughs> chills went in my arm like, oh, heck. And then I remember the movie, The Exorcist, you know, you get scared, them demons jump on you, you know what I mean? I'm like, and then the Bible talks about the seven sons of Sceva, you know, they come in and they're talking about, you know, I cast you out in the name of the Paul. And they said, now, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. Who are you? And they jumped on them, stripped them of their clothes, and ran them out the door. Church folks today don't even believe stuff like that happened. And yet there's more demon oppression and possession in the world today, and it's with comfort because there's nobody who understands enough spiritual authority to recognize them and cast them out. Mm. Right. Now, I done lost half my folks on, on the Internet, like, whoa, he talking about demons? That's that weird stuff. No, look at what Jesus said. He said when he had called him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. A power is defined as ability to get the job done. How many of you know that you're anointed with power to get the job done? Amen. He did not put you on this earth powerless. Amen. And I'm telling you in these last days, it is time for the body of Christ to stand up in the power and the authority that Jesus has given unto us, and it is time to let the world see us operate in this authority and in this power. And I'm, I'm excited about it. Amen. So he gave unto the twelve power against unclean spirits. Power to do what? To cast them out. Do you know that every born again? Oh, I just saw something. I just saw that. I just saw it. Oh, yeah. How come we hadn't seen much of this power? Because you, had, you didn't understand grace enough to keep condemnation off your life. Amen. And shame and condemnation kept you from functioning in the authority and the power that is given in you, because when you would proceed to try to operate in power, then that, that self-doubt would come up and say, you ain't holy enough. You're not righteous enough. Who do you think you are? You're not perfect enough. And then you would stop and wouldn't operate in your power. And then you would twist scriptures like the Bible says, this kind cometh not out except by prayer and fasting. And it wasn't referring to this kind of spirit, but it was referring to this kind of unbelief. And what happened is your condemnation and your shame, uh, it, it, it dwarfed your confidence. And you wouldn't proceed to do it because you didn't think you were, watch this, worthy. Oh, that ends tonight, praise the Lord. Amen. I said that ends tonight. And anytime you have that thought, when you're starting to operate in your spiritual authority, anytime you have that thought, that's when you open your mouth and say out loud, I'm still the righteousness of God. Now come out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Boy, that's strong. Every devil in hell trembled when I just said that because I just removed the mask. They're trying to talk you out of your ability to walk in your spiritual authority. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I tell you, I'm so stirred up. I almost kept my mouth closed and wasn't going to open it no more because I'm like, I'm going to just sit here in this for a minute. This is where we are now. And I am believing God for a church that will begin to function in their spiritual authority until all hell begins to tremble. Amen. That no devils can be nowhere near us when we have our church services because they are afraid them people know about their authority. They know about their power. They hunting for demons. They're looking for somebody that needs hands laid on them. Praise be to God. And we're there now. Amen. We're here. This whole thing is about to experience a switcheroo. You're about to go from people that have been powerless. You never were powerless. The power just laid dormant. Oh, 
right. Now we're getting ready to wake up the sleeping giant on the inside of you. Oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Somebody missing with you at work, I dare you to go home before work tomorrow and just sit there and say in the name of Jesus, I take authority over that spirit that's operating against such and so, such and so against me, and I command that spirit to cease in its ability to function against me, and I receive it in Jesus' name. And you go there tomorrow, and she's standing at the door. I wanted to give you some coffee and tell you I apologize for everything I ever did for you. You ain't going to know what I said is true unless you do it. Amen. You can sit up there and look at me like, for real, is that how that happens? Or you can go do it. Amen. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, you better double pin down your wig, honey, because there's a mighty wind getting ready to blow through your household, getting ready to blow through this church, getting ready to blow through your life. You better get ready, honey. Put your seatbelt on. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, glory. He said, cast the cast. He gave you power to cast them out. All right, now watch this. And to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Oh, boy. You know the big problem with healing? You keep talking to God about your problem instead of talking to your problem about your God and what he has already done. Think about what I just said. You keep talking to God about your problem because you don't see yourself with power. You see yourself powerless. So what does a powerless person do? They go to God. And God is like, why are you talking to me about healing them when I have given you the power to do it? And even when you do it, you say, well, I didn't do nothing the Lord did. He provided the power. You used it. It's time for you to start using what he gave you. Quit acting like a bunch of spirits or sissies and use the power he gave you. So when you're confronted with stuff, quit sitting there being scared, wondering what this and that. First things first, I lay hands on you because I've been given the power by the almighty God of creation. And now I'm using your power in Jesus' name. I command you to be healed. And in Jesus' name, I speak to sickness. I speak to this disease. Be healed. You know what we did? You, he talking to every Christian right here, and you limited, you limited that power to a few people. Say, well, I can't do that because that ain't my gift. <laughs> no, he, he gave you the gift of, of grace and grace Grace, without you earning it, has given you power to use. Amen. Say out loud, I have been given power, I have been given power anointing, anointing, ability to get results, ability to get results by, the God of grace, by the God of grace to use. To use. Hebrews 10, 7. And as you go, and as you go, preach, and he says, when you preach, preach saying. As you go, preach saying. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus is at hand. The kingdom is at hand. Dominion is at hand. So what do I do? Verse 8, heal the sick. There it is again. 
What's the implication? You heal the sick. Isn't that amazing? Nobody believes in that. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about generally in the world. Nobody believes that's possible anymore. It is. It is. I remember, you remember we did that meeting at Madison Square Gardens. We had a healing service, and the ambulance was bringing people from the hospital. That lady was, I was on the bed. They, uh, there's all kinds of people coming. I think we, Tab and I laid hands over everybody. We laid hands on everybody. We dispensed the power. I laid hands on a guy 20 years ago who had leprosy and his sores were still bleeding. Hadn't had anybody touched him in half his life. The Lord said, do you trust me? I said, I do. He said, hug this man. I grabbed him and hugged him. After I finished, blood was all on my, my clothes and everything. I laid hands on over 10,000 people that day. They had to carry me out. Now, I, I believe that, you know, yeah, you can pray. I've heard all kinds of weird things about, well, you can pray, you don't have to lay hands, and, and I reckon you don't. But if he, he's given me power to heal the sick, I'm going to use it. We come up with all kinds. Well, I ain't going to use it till the Lord tells me to. We, we keep coming up with religious, spiritual excuses because we don't believe. Believe what? That we have power. Yeah, but what if they don't get healed? That ain't none of your business. It really is not. He's already declared it. You and I believe we receive it, and we lay hands, and we heal the sick. One of my confessions is, Father, when I lay hands on the sick, they get well. Yeah, but what if they did? That, that, ain't, that ain't got, no. I lay hands on the sick, they get well. They, of course, they got to receive it. I can reach out and give you something. You got to receive it. But I'm not going to say what ain't working that he told me would work just because you failed to receive it. I'm, I'm not doing that. Or you go back and do the same thing. When I lay hands on the sick, they get well. Well, what if they don't fall out? Is falling out a prerequisite of somebody getting well? And so you're more concerned about pushing them to the ground so it looked like they got well? Man, the miracles this ministry has seen over the last, ooh, 36, 37 years has been amazing. It's weird. You don't hear that too much, but nobody's, you know, what, what's going on with that? We don't hear that too much. About time for me to get Richard Roberts back here. Now, he carries an anointing of healing, but every believer has the power Every believer can use the healing anointing. Every believer can. Do it. Yeah, but I'm scared. You, you can tell it in the room almost. I'm not really excited about hearing this part because I don't plan on doing it. <laughs> you the preacher, you do the healing. No, but you're the believer. And as for the believer, they'll lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Amen. Amen. Heal the sick. Watch this. Cleanse the leopards. All right, now, you thought healing was something. Raise the dead. I just want to check out what you're thinking about. Raise the dead. You ought to get your iPhone, flip it, so you can see how you look right now. <laughs> Raise the dead. <clears throat> Cast out devils. There it is again. So there must be some devils housed in some people Amen. if he keeps talking about cast them out. Amen. Freely you have received. Freely give. Now I'm going to tell you something. Here's, here's, here's one of the problems, is that we try to stage this power. Let me explain to you what I mean. You think you're only supposed to do this when you're at church for applause. You know why I've seen the greatest miracles take place? 
when I'm not in church, I don't have an audience with somebody who don't even know Jesus. Try that. That'll build your faith up. Satan is a defeated foe. It's time we walk in the authority God has given us over the enemy. Every attack of the enemy is going to begin with an attempt to attack who you are in Christ. For a love gift of $12.95 or more, we would like to offer you this powerful series, The Contrast, Identity versus Performance. He did not put you on this earth powerless. And I'm telling you in these last days, it is time for the body of Christ to stand up in the power and the authority that Jesus has given unto us. And it is time to let the world see us operate in this authority and in this power. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me, I condemn it. Call or go online to order today. Renew your mind, your spirit, Renew your life at the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Check out this year's speakers you don't want to miss. Creflo Dollar. You gotta have your own relationship with Jesus. Taffy Dollar. I receive the gift of grace. Michael T. Smith. Let me give you news, you are not in the flesh. Gregory Dickow. It's the equalizer of every human being. And Andrew Womack. Being sensitive to the Lord can change your life. Your life will never be the same again. It changed your mind, heart open. It's just life-changing experience. Can't miss it. Don't miss out on this opportunity to set your life back on track. Come to the 2020 Grace Life Conference at the World Dome in College Park, Georgia, July 6th through the 10th. Register by texting Grace Life to 51555 or visiting creflodollarministries.org. Seats are limited, so register today. Every time you give, you are being used by God to stop misfortune in someone else's life. God used someone to deliver you out of your pit. Now he can use you to deliver others from their pits. Your gifts to Creflo Dollar Ministries are used to spread the gospel to hurting people on every continent. We cannot thank you enough for helping us make a lasting impact. We appreciate you and God bless you. If you want to honor the Lord by sowing financial seeds into Creflo Dollar Ministries, call the number on your screen or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. Your generosity allows us to make a difference in the lives of people all over the world. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes.